us all stand and we're going to sing uh, Hallelujah. I think the words will be up here on the screen. We'll sing it, no music. Let's all stand. <clears throat> Hallelujah. that is. Welcome to Bethany. Uh, we're glad you're here. It's good to see you in the Lord's house this morning. And we just trust in the Lord continuing the, in our service and appreciate that opening, don't you? That's a blessing and stir our hearts this morning. Uh, we want to go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him to help us this morning uh, in the service as the furthest of it. And I believe God has something special for us this morning. And we praise the Lord for that. It's good to see you and appreciate you being here in the Lord's house. So I made a mistake this morning among other mistakes that I've made in life. So I was just speaking to Beverly this morning and said, pray for me and, and Lord help and think about the service. And I said, well, uh, uh, Michael won't be there today. You know, he had surgery <laughs> last Monday. So the bar makes a week and that's him back there. Amen. And so uh, praise God, it, uh, in uh, my experience of uh, Beverly's surgery and he had the shoulder replacement and uh, she's had a uh, hip and two knees and, and I don't want to report this to you Michael but I've heard the shoulder's worse than that so anyway but uh, I'm glad he's able to be here aren't you? That's a blessing and uh, I'd say it took some effort to get here but we're glad you're here this morning each and every one and just good to, good to know the Lord isn't it? And uh, we pray the Lord just Continue happiness. Maybe there's a request of prayer, something to mention this morning. And we thank the Lord for that. What a blessing. Uh, excited about children's church, and I'm going to ask Brian to come this time. <laughs> Good morning. How
how we're doing this morning. Doing good. Oh, me too this morning. All right, uh, this morning I want to read to you a scripture you'll probably hear a lot here at Christmas time, but we're going to read it. We're going to start December off with it. Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and the peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of the hosts will perform this. I, I've got this in my this morning with me. This is old school stuff, man. We got Google Earth and all that. But I want you to keep in mind everything I'm talking about this morning took place right there in that little bitty teeny tiny spot on this globe. Understand how, look how small that is. Do you see that? Look at America over here. And then look at Israel. Just a tiny little place on that map. Oh, big things happened in Israel. Sure did. So there's a song, the Oak Ridge Boys. You ever heard tell of them boys? Y'all heard Oak Ridge Boys ever? They sung, uh, you know, different uh, songs. Like, they got a song, though. It's called in, uh, Most Inconvenient Christmas. And I was thinking about that a little bit, uh, you know, coming into Christmas season here. And within that song, uh, they're telling a the story in that song. And, uh, you know, it starts out that he's, he gets this uh, card in the mail with his Christmas cards. It's the thing he had ordered ain't going to get there in time for Christmas, you know. And then so they had uh, packed up all the kids up in the car and they're going to Grandpa's house and they run into a blizzard and the car broke down. So they had to share eggnog at a truck stop. Christmas at the truck stop with eggnog. Went on to Grandpa's house. Grandpa's house had done burnt down because Christmas light had burnt it down. Well, he couldn't leave the farm because he had to take his animals with him, so he come back to live with them. So now they got chickens everywhere, and they got pigs in the barn or pigs in the tub and all kinds of things. And through that, he's talking about, he said, you know, it's, that's unfortunate, this and that, but he knows, said, no, it's inconvenient. It's inconvenient. And I thought about, you know, 2020. I could say of 2020, it's been pretty inconvenient, ain't it? It sure has. And here we go into Christmas time, you know, and with the normal stuff, we're going to have the fights at Walmart and everything else going on to get the perfect Christmas gift because, oh, how I love whoever, and I got to have that gift, and you can't get it. I'm buying it first, right? Yeah. Yeah, Christmas 2020. Here we go. But I thought, you know, we're dealing, you know what it's going to be. You're going to hear it from everyone on television. You can't get together, people. You can't do this. You can't do that. Can't, 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 can't. Well, I would say this. Let's talk about the very first Christmas. The very first Christmas. A little girl named Mary was having a baby that she really couldn't explain to the people outside looking in. Well, she ain't married, and she's having a baby. Got to explain that. Then she's got to be, the government says, you got to go to Bethlehem. You got to go over here, and you got to get counted. You, don't you love the government? Don't sound like it's changed a lot, does it? You got to go do this. Let's just go tramp and travel 100 miles here, a walking on donkey or whatever. Let's go get county. But she's going to have a baby in a barn. In a barn. That's pretty inconvenient, isn't it? Yeah, pretty inconvenient. She's got king here. This baby's been born and the new king's been born. He's sending folks, wants him dead. You got... Strange shepherd, these strange men are showing up in a barn where you just had a baby. I'm sure she maybe didn't feel like it at the time, but all these people are showing up to see this baby. You got a star shining that's never shined before on this planet. It's shining tonight. You got smelly animals. Old barn, smell it. Just put yourself there for a minute. Pretty inconvenient. And you got the devil in an uproar because something just happened tonight. Yeah. So I'd say Mary and Joseph had a pretty inconvenient first Christmas, wouldn't you? Yeah, I'd say they did. But what did they get that first Christmas? What did we get that first Christmas? We got Jesus. We got Jesus is what we got. Yeah. In the world's eyes, I got to wonder how the world looking in on that situation. They're thinking, you're, you're, you're small right now, but I'm talking about a baby. Okay, I'm talking about a little 
baby right now. We're looking in on it, guys, and look at that. How could this little baby cause such an uproar and such a stirring in this world? Because his name was Jesus. Yeah, because his name was Jesus. You know, uh, Mackie, she showed me. Listen, right quick. I'll be quick. I'm going to hurry. I promise you. Mackie showed me a little thing right quick. Listen. Max showed a little Christmas thing. Y'all watch it sometime. I don't even know what the name of it was, but it's about Christmas. This little, this little donkey had been running with Mary through this whole thing, right? And these little dogs, these dogs was on the chain. This guy, he was chasing Mary the whole time, right? He had these dogs on the chain. He's dragging these dogs. They're mean as they can be, and they want to just chew that donkey up and everything else. And he's dragging them around that chain. And towards the end of that thing, when Jesus had been born, Man, he gets knocked off a cliff and he's hanging by his fingernails right here. And them dogs are hanging behind him on them chains. And it's to save himself, you won't guess what he done with them dogs? He let them dogs go. That little donkey saved her life. Now what I'm trying to say is that's the devil today. The devil dragging us around with, by a chain. And the time comes, you think he cares about you? He'll let you go. And the only one that can save you is Jesus Christ. This baby, I'm talking about this manger, that night was born, so who can save you. Amen? Amen. 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 Old world's cold and it's dark, I promise you. I don't care a thing about you. Not one thing. But Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. So I want you to know, when things, you know we look around things, they get pretty bad, right? Look pretty rough, don't we? But I want you to understand this this morning. When things look like they can't get no worse, who's with you? Say it loud. Jesus, he's with us. Because he loves us. And all this stuff we've done to him, them just bad things we've done towards him, he still loves us. And he'll save us. So as we roll into Christmas, maybe we don't need to worry so much about knocking somebody out to grab that last whatever off the shelf at Walmart. Let's think about that first Christmas and what God did for us in giving his son Jesus and what he does. He saves this old world. Listen, I'm holding this globe in my hand. Ain't that pretty cool? I mean, I got the whole world in my hand right now, don't I? Well, more important than that, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has this world in His hand today. And He'll save us if we just let us. Well, if we just humble. If we just humble ourselves, what would God say He'd do? He'd heal our land, wouldn't He? We need to just break our hearts and humble ourselves. Christian, you got nothing to fear. Nothing to fear in this world or the world to come. Because Jesus got your heart in His hand. Don't let stuff scare you to death. Don't let it do Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. There it is this morning. Prayer request this morning? Bible school. Bible school. Yes, we're going to have that one of these days soon, I hope. We're going to pray. How about children's church? Okay. All right, anybody want to pray this morning? Do you? Come on. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you today, Father, for this opportunity to be in your house. And, Lord, for that night, that day, Lord, that Jesus was born, I thank you, God. So look around, Father, this world and the troubles that's in it, God. We just pray, Father. God, I humble myself before you, Lord, today, ask you, Lord, to heal us. We need your help. We need your touch, God. And, Father, the lost folks around this world, Lord, they need you, Lord. I pray, Father, that they ain't, they're going to have to see us through us, Lord, they're going to have to see Jesus through us. Help us to be that before them, Lord. That they might see the need to be saved. Pray, Father, for service for this church. God, we ask it for a pastor help him preach the word of God, Lord, today. And God, I thank you for your many blessings. God, we're going to ask for children's church. We're going to ask for Bible school coming up, Lord. Ask for these young folks, Lord. We're just going to pray it and ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Stand and turn to 139, Green Book. 139.
in the book of 2 Timothy, if you want to find your place this morning, the very first chapter, I'm going to read about three verses there in that uh, chapter, the Lord and Lee. But uh, we've got something special right before the sermon this morning, and uh, we're just excited about that, what the Lord has for us uh, this morning. And I'm going to ask Preacher Chris to come. This morning, I had a, a song on my heart, and I kept singing it, rolling over my mind, and humming it, and still singing it on the way to church, and walking in, and I was still singing. And I said, Lord, if, if you allow me, and uh, I'd like to sing it. I like to sing with other people, because I can blend in better than I can just singing by myself, but uh, this is, I'm going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20, we're looking back at verse 18, the Bible says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not, that the spirit are subjects unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. What he was saying this morning to the disciples, and it would be easy for anybody, I mean, you receive power from God that you're able to go and, uh, you know, uh, tread on serpents, and you're, and you're not going to be hurt. You're going to be able to face your enemies, and they're not going to be able to hurt you. And how easy that would be for any of us to where pride could rise up in our heart, even what Jesus um, uh, gives unto us to be able to serve him. And I guess he is wanting to keep their pride in check. And just let them know that don't rejoice in those things, but rejoice rather in this, that your name is written in heaven. And it's not that I wrote it in heaven, not that the disciples wrote it in heaven, not that you wrote it in heaven, not that our government wrote it in heaven, but by the precious blood of our Savior, that our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You know, we preachers talked about a life verse, and mine's Proverbs chapter 20, verse 23. But I guess it's also good to have a life song. And my life song this morning is, and I know my name is there. And I just want to share this song with you this morning. My name is in the book of life. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I rise above all doubt and strife and read my title clear. I know, I know, I truly know my name, I know my name is there. I know my name is there. My name is written there. Listen, listen. My name once stood with sinners lost and bore a shameful record. But by His blood the Savior crossed and placed it on His roll. I know, I know, I truly know My name, I know, my name is there I know my name is there, my name is written there. Yet inward trouble often cast a shadow over my title. But now with full salvation blessed, praise God it's ever clear. I know, I know, I truly know My name, I know, my name is there I know my name is there My name is written there While others climb through worldly strife To carve a name of honor High up in heaven's book of life, my name is written there. 
I know, I know, I truly know my name, I know my name is there. I know my name is there, my name is written there. Greatest present I've got today. That government can't take away, that COVID can't take away, that nobody else, Satan even, cannot take it away this morning, is that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life by the precious blood of my Savior. And I hope you can say that this morning with every bit of assurance this morning that I know, not that maybe or I hope so, but you know this morning that your name is in the book of life. Praise His name. Amen. 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 What a blessing, wasn't it? Amen. I was thinking that's the greatest thing any person could ever know. The greatest thing any person could ever know. You know, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about, and we have in our society, and, and uh, from my childhood till now, it's amazing to me at all the knowledge that uh, kids have now. And not just kids, but just in general, knowledge. And I believe knowledge has increased. And, but the Bible said that those that are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, and that's a sad state to be, isn't it? But thank God this morning, the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing Him, greatest thing anyone could ever understand and know. We're in the book of Second Timothy this morning. I appreciate that. What a blessing. And we're in the first chapter, and we're in verse 8, 9, and 10. Our memory verse this week is chapter nine, is verse 9 of 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, and not according to our works, but according to His purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Verse 8 this morning, 2 Timothy chapter 1. And the Bible says in verse 8, be be, now, be not there, therefore, ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But be there partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being here this morning for the service, and what a blessing from start up till now. Lord, we praise you. May it continue, Lord, your hand upon us. And in the message, may you bring to mind and heart the thought and thoughts you'd be pleased to be spoken. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I'd pray and ask. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this very special time. And has been recognized and celebrated even in our service this morning with the children's church. And Lord, with the, with the knowledge of the name in the Lamb's Book of Life, through and by our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we praise you. Thank you, Lord, we could sing praises in our very opening to the Lord. And say hallelujah, what a Savior. And Lord, we praise you and praise you. Thank God. May you help us, Lord. I pray as those that are listening, the video goes out. And Lord, maybe those that are, are, are viewing, we thank you, Lord, for them. And Lord, maybe there's someone or more than one, they do not know their name is there. And I pray, Lord, in the course of the message, and may they understand through the Holy Spirit conviction and come to a knowledge of the saving of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll try to preach this morning. My uh, message title is Through the Gospel. Through the Gospel. We find that in verse 10 of our chapter. It said it is brought to light. Uh, life and mortality. Immortality has been brought to light through the gospel. Through the gospel. And I want to think about these verses. And the verse 9 is the one that I focused on. And that I won't try to focus on in the message. And it's all, it's all possible uh, through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now in verse 8 of this chapter, and Paul talks about this, this book, 2 Timothy, is Paul's, uh, some of his last words. Uh, we see that in the last chapter, the fourth chapter, where Paul said the time of his departure was at hand. And he was, he was near death at this time. He's writing to Timothy. Now it seems to me, and there, there was things there that, that uh, perhaps not mentioned in the, in the verses and in the scripture. We don't know all that Timothy was going through, but Paul talks about Timothy's tears. So there's a lot of difficulties, I believe, that Timothy was going through. Paul's encouraging him. And he says in verse 8, he said, uh, that, uh, be thy, be, uh, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. The afflictions of the gospel. And as the gospel was preached in that day and as it's being preached and proclaimed today, and we see in our country, I mentioned, I believe the other Sunday, that uh, the hatred toward Christianity is like it's never been before in my lifetime in this country. But Jesus tells us in the book of John chapter 15, and he's speaking to his disciples and he's speaking to us also. And he said that, uh, that they hated, they will hate you because he said they hated me. And this world is not a friend to grace. And they, they're opposed to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they hate that. The hounds of this world are barking at you and I. And I got to thinking about that. One of the reasons they're barking at you and I, because we're strangers to them. Amen. You know, just an old dog out here. You know, you go up to a house. I've done a lot of, been to a lot of houses in, in route delivery. And you go there. And a dog that, uh, if, you're, if you're strange, usually most dogs, uh, they'll, take, they'll take note of that, a stranger. And they bark at them. That's the reason the hounds of this world barking at you and I. We're strangers and we're just pilgrims passing through. We're strange to them when we profess a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When they tell them that Jesus Christ is the answer and that he's the only answer uh, for you and I and for the whole world. And thank God this morning that he is. And then we'll look and focus on verse 9 of this chapter. Our memory verse, who have saved us and have, have called us with an holy calling not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. I might say at the outset this morning, and there's other verses, Ephesians 1 verse 4, and other verses that substantiate that. And you know, the cross of Calvary was not a surprise, and not a second, it was not an afterthought with God. And neither was the fall of man a surprise. And he didn't go, uh, you know, trying to figure out some, a solution whenever a man, Adam, fell into sin. God had already, before the world ever began, in Christ Jesus, he had a plan and a purpose. And I might say this morning that all the plans and purposes of God are fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul begins to encourage us, and it's wonderful to have some encouragement in this day in which we live, isn't it? And we surely need that. I mean, you look around you and you can, get, you can get down in a hurry in the situations. And we talk about 2020 and that's a lot of uh, things are said about that. A year, a year like I've never lived in before in my life, 2020. And the situations that we find ourselves in and continues to be uh, uh, ongoing uh, from, uh, from a lot of aspects of life. But I want to thank God this morning. And then we look at our, uh, of, of for the Savior Praise God, we're going to be celebrating and already in our children's church. What a tremendous verse. You know Isaiah chapter 9. Be good, just go back and reread that again and again, wasn't it? And thank God for sharing. Never grows old. What excites my heart of a Savior being born. Amen. To us, a child is given. A, a child is born. A son's given. Thank God. And then further on than that, the government shall be upon his shoulder. Praise God, he's not... He's not be even beginning to be through, amen, and not finished, amen, for eternity, amen. At one of our memory verses, Luke chapter 1, verse 33, He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Thank God for that, the Lord Jesus. We see in our verse this morning as we go, and I just kind of outlined it a little bit, I think, uh, just the verse itself. And he said, who hath saved us? Thank God for salvation, amen. He has saved us. He has saved us and he hath called us into a holy calling. He saved us, thank God we're saved. Our name is written there. 
Rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Thank God for salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he said, he hath called us with an holy calling. I'd written down a little thing and I may just mention it and I had it on my little outline. Uh, but it, uh, it said, you have to be different to make a difference. You ever thought about that? You have to be different to make a difference. You don't change things by adding more of the same. You have to be different to make a difference. Thank God this morning, we have been saved and then we've been called with an holy calling to be holy. Now, this was not the ideal that Paul's writing to Timothy and he's saying, now, Timothy, you're to be holy on your own, your own efforts and your own resolve. Because he goes on and says that, not according to our works. We call to be holy, but God didn't call us and on our own resolve and on our own efforts, but thank God I'm glad He's with us, amen. And He helps us. Book of Philippians said it's God in you that works to do and, and, and for His own purpose, it's God working in us. Paul describes it this way in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. But he said, God's grace was not bestowed upon me in vain. And I labored more abundantly, he said, than they all. But wait a minute, yet not I, but Christ. And the grace that was with me, it's the grace of God, amen, that helps us and leads us in, into a holy life. Now, there's a lot to be said about that as Christians. You know, in a, in a, in a, in a former day, perhaps, than our day, uh, Christians were more distinctive, perhaps, than they are now. But I believe as we go in and things get darker and darker as they're going to be, you and I that are saved and let your light shine, praise God, the light's going to be brighter and brighter as the darker it gets. You and I that are saved, different to make a difference, amen. He saved us and He's called us into this holy calling. But He said He's not called us into this and holy calling and, it, and saved us not of our works, not of our own works, that could, should be emphasized over and over again. Book of Second, uh, Ephesians 2 and 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it's the gift of God. The gift of God. And not of works, lest any man should boast. Titus 3 and 5. For, he have say, he, for his mercy saved us, not according to our own righteousness. Not our works this morning. You know, I was thinking about that. Not our works. Not according to our works. Did you know God created the earth out of nothing? And I believe that man has to become nothing before God can make something out of him. And I believe we've got it right in Bible school when we teach the three ABCs of salvation. Number one, admit you're a sinner. And before God can create and have a new creature in Christ Jesus, then we must become nothing. And then God can make something out of us, thank God. Realize that we're lost and on the way to hell. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He came to seek and save that which was lost. You and I and everyone that's ever lived on the face of the earth, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's not our own works, he said, that he has saved us. And it's not through our own efforts and our own works that he's called us unto a holy calling. But he says that it's his purpose and his grace. You know, I'm glad God had a purpose for every one of us before the world ever started. You said, how in the world could we imagine and think that just by reading the scripture? It was given us in Christ Jesus before the world ever began. God had the plan of salvation that man, men, women, boys and girls could be saved and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He saved us. He's called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own plan and his grace. Thank God this morning for His grace. We could preach and just settle down right there for on and on. Never scratch the surface of the grace of God. I'm glad God's grace is sufficient, aren't you? No matter whatever comes or whatever goes, God's grace, no matter what, God's grace is sufficient. So we see that His grace was given us in Christ Jesus. And then He goes on in verse 10. But He is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, who have brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now in the Old Testament, 
eternal life and death and resurrection was somewhat shattered. You don't run to the book of Ecclesiastes to get a doctrine on eternal life and resurrection. In the Old Testament, this was shattered, shattered somewhat. But you say, what brought it to light? The appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ made it manifest. That word manifest means to make plain and to make clear. And that's what happened when Jesus came and was born as already been described and talked about in a manger. I like that. What a, what a uh, comparison that, that was the inconvenience of that. That's something to think about, isn't it? No room in the inn, but there's a stables there. Traveling miles to, just to be counted, you know, the burden of that. God designed all of that in the providence of God to get them where they're supposed to be. Isn't that amazing what God's doing? Some think, and sometimes it's so disheartening and discouraging to look at the situation and to think and to be burdened about our country, the changes that's, that has taken place and is taking place. And many of the freedoms that we're subject to lose and things are going to be in, the landscape's going to be entirely different. I fear that. But thank God this morning, you know, I like that the world can't take it away from us. They can take a lot of things away from us and they can put a lot of persecution. The Bible said in the end time, that's another thing about 2 Timothy uh, in the third chapter, it talks about in the last days, things that's going to take place. And it's talking about, you know, evil men's going to get worse and worse. Love of many is going to wax cold. There's going to be deceiving and decei- deceptions. And there's going to be perilous times and all these other things that it talks about are going to take place. Men won't endure sound doctrine and so forth. Be turned to fables, turned away from the truth and don't want to hear the truth. And all these things taking place. But thank God I'm glad that we can know Jesus, aren't you? And we're safe in His arms this morning. What a blessing. So we see that it is manifest through the coming of the Lord Jesus. Then it says not only that in verse 10, our Savior, but He said, who hath abolished death? Who hath abolished death? I got to thinking about that and studying on that, abolished death. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says that the last enemy that's going to be destroyed is death. People are still dying. People died after this was written, that he abolished death. Now, you know, that cannot mean in the sense that people would not still die a physical death. But he abolished death for you and I as to the effect that death could have on us. We used to sing the song. It was a kind of an uplifting song. We'd sing, there's no grave going to hold this body down. And that's the ideal that he abolished death for you and I that are saved this morning. And he brought to light, he shined the light on life and immortality. As I said, it was shattered somewhat in the Old Testament when Jesus appeared. What do you say in the book of John, chapter 10? The preacher preached a wonderful message, Psalm 23, and talked about the good shepherd. But when Jesus came as the good shepherd in John chapter 10, he said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And I give unto them eternal life and they'll never perish. He has brought life and immortality to light. First John 1 and 12 of uh, 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 5 and verse 12, he said, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. Jesus himself said, John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Life. He brought life and immortality to light. We understood, thank God, because on the cross of Calvary, he abolished death, and he got the victory there. He says that in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 18. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and of death. He's got the keys. He got the victory on the cross of Calvary. He abolished death in the sense of the effect of what it could do to you and I. And death no longer then became uh, to you and I the effect that after Jesus uh, abolished death, we view death this morning as a Christian in the view of the tomb. You say, what about the tomb? Praise God, it's empty. That's how we view death this morning as a Christian. We've got eternal life. We may, pass, we may go in the rapture or we may pass through the, through the valley of the shadow of death. We may face that. 
But I read in the Bible that for those that are saved, death, you say, what is death? It's just the gateway to glory. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord just that quick. We used to preach, the old time preachers preached this about John the Baptist. You know, they decapitated, cut his head off. Somebody said before his toes ever stopped wiggling, he is walking on the street of gold. Amen. You said you believe it's that instant and that quick. I surely do. To be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord just that quick. What did he do for you and I that are saved? Praise God, he abolished death. Amen. And you and I that are saved this morning, we can look at death and we can say this. As the book of 1 Corinthians said, Oh, death, where is you sting at? Another thing, we old time preachers like to use the illustration of a bee stinging you. And I, I've got an allergy to bee stings and I don't want to get stung by a bee. And I try to avoid them, you know, much so as possible. And uh, the black hornet's about the worst thing they ever attacked me in, in an allergy sense. But you know, in that blessing this morning, I wouldn't be a bit afraid of a black hornet if he didn't have a stinger in him. I mean, he could fly all around, climb up on my arm. I wouldn't want him just climbing around on me, you know, they kind of just necessarily. But if he didn't have a stinger, I wouldn't be afraid, would you? You say, what did the Lord do for death for you and I that are saved? Praise God, he took the stinger out. Amen. And then you and I that are saved, we can look at the grave and we can say this, oh grave, where's your victory? Where is your victory? And then it goes on in 1 Corinthians 15 and it says, thanks be to God which giveth us the victory. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason we got victory this morning. Praise God, the appearing of Jesus brought to light, life, and immortality. It goes on in that chapter 15, and it describes that and talks about that. And it talks about this mortal, this mortal body we're in is subject to death and decay. But praise God this morning, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 15 again, that this mortal is going to put on immortality. And then shall be brought past the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. Immortality has the ideal this morning that you're going to have a glorified body as each one of us is saved going to have. And it is not subject to decay nor death. It's going to live forever. It's going to be just like Jesus. Ain't that a blessing? Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to His own p purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world ever began. That at the appearing of Him, it was manifest, praise God, He brought life and immortality to light. And how did He do that? He did it through the gospel. For I'm not ashamed, Paul said, and he said to Timothy in these verses here, he said, Timothy, don't be ashamed. Paul said in Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed, he said, of the gospel of Christ because it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. We're not ashamed of the old cross of Calvary, amen. And preaching the gospel that Jesus went there to die for our sins and bore our sins on body on the tree. And he did that and he resurrected the third day the gospel. We preach and teach that and believe that. And we tell people on authority of God's word, if you'll believe that from your heart, you can be saved and get your name written in heaven and go there. Amen. Had a lady came to the altar one time and this was her question. And one of the deacons was counseling her and she asked him this. And she said, what I want to know is how you get to heaven. And how you can have eternal life, that's what I want to know. I'm glad you can know that, amen, as the songwriter wrote. And she left that day knowing that, praise God. And that's a good thing. That's, a, that's, that's the greatest thing and beyond all other things that a person knows, you could know a lot of things and have great knowledge. If you didn't know that, all that other wouldn't be worth a hill of beans. Thank God this morning brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I want to make a special appeal this morning in the closing of the message in two verses I want to use and think about. Thank God through His appearing. What did He do? He saved us and He called us with a holy calling. 
not according to our works, but according to His purpose and His grace. And He chose us in Christ Jesus before the world ever began. You know, I appreciate those that view the video. Good news we hear and good reports and people. It's a blessing to them. A preacher friend of mine, he says, it just feeds my soul. He's now has lost his eyesight. And I talked to him on the phone the other week. And his voice is weak. He sometimes can't talk to where you maybe could hear. But he was able to talk and, and, and talk to me clear. And he said, preacher, I've got to where I can't see now. But his wife, she pulls up the video on Sunday nights and on the TV there. She can see it, but he can't see it. But he said, I just get back in my chair there. I can't see it, but I can hear it. It feeds my soul. I praise God for that. But I want to make a special appeal this morning. It's on my heart. For those that maybe are viewing the video and you've never trusted Christ, you've never been saved. There's a verse in the book of Matthew chapter 9, I believe it is. And I want Peter to put that up for us this morning. Now the story behind this, and if you've been in church any time, you're familiar with that. We learned that in Sunday school, that story. It's always stuck with me as a blessing. You remember the story of the man that was paralyzed. And these four men brought him and tore the roof off and I heard a preacher preach on that one time. It excited me so much. He, he made it surreal. I felt like I was on the roof. And he told them, and he preached about them four men on the roof. And he said there was one of them was just a shouter and praise God. And you know, he wasn't too involved in tearing off the roof. He was just praising God and, and on the roof and told about how he nearly fell off. And I was looking to see if he was going to fall. Just, he made it surreal to me. And he told about ripping that roof out and praise God to get that thing open. And they let that man down right there in the presence of Jesus. And he's paralyzed. He's on a bed. He can't walk. He can't get up. And Jesus said this to him first. He said, thy, my son, thy sins be forgiven thee. That's what he first said to him. And all those uh, uh, rulers of the Jews, the scribes and Pharisees, they, they said, oh, he's a blaspheming. They, nobody can forgive sin but God. And then in verse uh, 8 of that chapter 6, I believe it is, and he said, but you may know that the Son of Man had power on earth to forgive sin. Then he said to the sick of the palsy, Ride and take up thy bed and walk and go to thine house. Well, we know the end of that story. That's exactly what he did. He folded it up. <laughs> and he walked. And they looked at that. He said that you may know. Now I've read that scripture a whole lot of times and I remember in Sunday school they told us that story and it, it's always just been exciting to me about those four men, you know, and boy, somebody, I'm glad there was somebody that cared for me and that cared for you, that prayed for you, as it were, and they were the ones that got a hold of the corner, amen, and helped you to get to Jesus and had an influence in your life, maybe being a parent or whoever it was. Thank God for them, amen. And that's kind of a message within itself. I'd like to be a one of them carrying one of the corners anyhow, wouldn't you? Try to get somebody to Jesus. But I've read that story and I don't know at the times. A lot of times. But I was reading this week and there's something that was in that. And you know, isn't it kind of strange preaching this to me and to us? We read and anybody, you're reading something you've read before and forth, and then you read it and you see it and you said. Well, I, how in the world did that get there? Well, it was there all the time. <laughs> we just now saw it. But in, let me read that again. But he said that he may, he, that you may know that the Son of Man hath power. Here's the words, the words that I didn't see the many times that I've read it on earth. What a difference that made as I began to think about that that they may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. If you're not saved this morning, perhaps you're viewing the video, 
The time for prepare, and the only time to prepare and get ready and get saved is while you're here on earth. After you've once left this earth by death or whatever, if the Lord comes back and the earth is no longer remaining, then it's too late then. Forgiveness comes while you're on earth. And then I got to think about forgiveness. You know, forgiveness is a wonderful thing, even among people. You know, you do something for some, to somebody and maybe you've never done nothing to nobody, but I've done things to somebody that I needed forgiveness. And they'd say, I forgive you. I've had people do things to me that I'd say, I'll forgive you. But you know, our human forgiveness has got a limitation to it. I can forgive them and you can forgive them, but you and I, can't erase the guilt. They've been forgiven. I've been forgiven, but I'm still guilty of whatever it was that I've done. But thank God this morning, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, God's forgiveness goes further than that. Not only did He forgive me, glory to God, but He erased the guilt there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. We've been justified freely by His grace, praise God, just as no we'd ever sinned. Not only did He forgive me, but praise God, He took care of the guilt. The old account was settled long ago, and the record is clear today. He took care of the guilt. It's gone, amen. Thank God this morning, forgiveness. But the forgiveness this morning is here on earth. There is a path this morning from earth to heaven. And the Bible describes it as a narrow way. And you say, how narrow is it, preacher? Well, there's only one way. And Jesus said, I am the way. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Narrows down, don't it? The only path from earth to heaven is through and by the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. But then there is a path this morning from earth to hell. And the Bible describes it as a broad way, and many there be that go in thereat. It's crowded. There's a path from earth to heaven. There's a path from earth to hell. But there is this morning no path from hell to heaven. Purgatory is just a myth. Your sins are forgiven on this earth. We see that illustrated in the book of Luke where it talks about the rich man in hell and Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And it says that, that there's a great guff fixed. And he that would come from here to there, you can't do that. There's a path this morning from earth to heaven. There's a path from earth to hell. But once you leave this earth, if you're not forgiven, if your sins are not covered by the blood of Jesus, then hell, the lake of fire, for eternity. In the book of Revelation, and I've read that verse several times, Revelation 22 and verse 11. And every time I've read it, it's a troublesome verse. And I beg you this morning that if you're viewing, you're not saved. Today's the day of salvation and now is the accepted time. And don't put it off till tomorrow. I'm coming up the road this morning and I was thinking about that it's going to be too late for so many people. And I was thinking about an experience I had many years ago with a Christian friend of mine, an experience that, rather that he shared with me that he had had. And he was so concerned about a young man. This has been, uh, I was in my uh, 20s, I guess, back then, a lot of years ago. Drugs has been around a long time. And this young man of 17 years of age had taken some kind of drug that had made him unconscious. 
My Christian friend had been praying for this young man that he might get saved. But for 17 days he laid on the couch there in his mother's home, not knowing he's even in the world. You say, why did, I don't know why that came on my mind. But I'm saying this morning that if you've got your mind this morning, you can think. And you can come to Jesus and get saved. That'd be the best thing in all the world you could do. You know, an automobile accident, anything could put us into some kind of coma. We could never think again. I had a friend of mine that's a preacher and been preaching for many years now. But he spent years in prison. And he got so spaced out. He said they brought him a pencil one day and a piece of paper and, and, and told him, said, why don't you write a letter home? And he said he took that piece of paper and that pencil and he thought, well, I'll do that. But he said, you know, my mind was so far gone at that time, I could not even form a sentence. I'm saying if you're thinking this morning and you're alive and that heart's beating and if you're not saved, the Son of Man had power to forgive on earth. But it says in Revelation, once you're gone, you say, what happens, preacher? A person's destiny is sealed. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He is filthy, let him be filthy still. But he that is righteous, praise God, let him be righteous still. He is holy, let him be holy still. Our destiny is sealed while we're living on this earth. If you don't know Jesus, trust Him. And I don't know why all this came to my mind and the man with, that was paralyzed and, and on earth, this is the forgiveness. But I'm thinking this morning that there's going to be someone that maybe is going to hit that button on the Bethany Baptist Church 1892 video and you're going to view that and I'm praying and trusting and you're not saved that you'll trust Christ and be saved before it is everlastingly too late. He did it all for you and I. Thank God He saved us. And He called us to an holy calling. Not according to our works, but thank God according to His purpose and His grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. What a Savior. What a Savior. Let's stand and pray this morning. And I wonder why we're standing. Or his bell and eyes closed for a moment of prayer. And I want to ask you, Maybe as I've already expressed, if you don't know Jesus, pray you trust Him. And we that are saved, may we rejoice in the fact that we are saved, that we've been called to an holy calling. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank You. Lord, it sure is good to be in the Lord's house and experience what we've been able to experience this very morning and this very day. And I pray, Lord, for those maybe that'll be viewing and we'll view the video. Maybe they're not saved. Maybe there's someone that's saved and maybe they've just got away from the Lord. Maybe the cares of life and the pressures and all the things and the storms, whatever. Maybe they're just disheartened this morning. May they be encouraged, praise God, that He did save them. And that He called them to a holy calling. And praise God, it's all in His purpose and His grace. And He's given us in Christ Jesus for the world began. And He brought, thank God, immortality and light to light and life through the gospel. And I pray, Lord, for those that are unsaved, those maybe that are saved or away from the Lord, may they draw close to Him this very day. And we'll thank You for this day and for Your grace, Your saving grace. We praise You, Lord. We exalt Your name a name above every name. And oh, what a precious name, the name of Jesus. And we ask our prayer and our request in the name of His name, and we say amen. Amen.
house, isn't it? Amen. Amen. I'm glad he saved us. He's called us with a holy calling, thank God. It wasn't our works, but according to his purpose and his grace. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Amen. Amen. Ronald, how about praying for him?